What up, everyone? Um, I just got this. Some bit of news from Star Wars Universe again. This time it's dealing with more of uh, George Lucas. So, we finally get to find out why George Lucas sold Lucasfilm and Star Wars to the names I cannot mention. So, I'm reading this off my phone because I just found this out five minutes ago and I wanted to make a video about it, of course. So, I'm reading this off the Bounding Into Comics article by John F. Trent. If you haven't heard of Bounding Into Comics, very good um, source of um, news and media amongst the entertainment world and geek world. But here it is in this news article that just came out a couple of minutes ago. George Lucas reveals why he really sold Lucasfilm and Star Wars. Here's why. Star Wars creator and film icon George Lucas recently revealed why he really sold Lucasfilm in a newly published interview released in the Star Wars archives book. So that same archives book where he revealed um, that Princess Leia would have had more uh, more of a role in his version of the sequel trilogy and Darth Maul's as well. So um, here we go. I guess the story was first reported by Ichibaka at Star Wars Disney. Star Wars Disney. Set the boards around. It's been a long day, people. At Disney, Star Wars is dumb. Lucas detailing that his reasons for selling Lucasfilm in 2012 were his commitments to his family, which is all fine and dandy, but uh, he's really had to sell it to Disney. But then again, on him, he didn't know that they would turn it into a circus. But anyways, Lucas tells Paul Duncan, At the time, I was starting the next trilogy. I talked to the actors and I was starting to gear up. I was about to have a daughter with my wife. It takes 10 years to make a trilogy. He's right. For him, make a good trilogy. And um, episodes 1 to 2 to 3 took from 1995 to 2005. So, if some of us don't know, he probably basically started before 1999 trying to come up with stuff. You hear that, Disney? It takes some time to come up with a heartfelt trilogy. You know, some people don't like the prequels. At least the prequels told a story. At least a somewhat good story that people can actually look and not be outraged by, like the sequel trilogy. But going on. So the Star Wars creator continued, I'll, I'll still be working on episode, I forgot, IX? Is it 10 or 9? I think IX is Roman Newers is 9. In 2012, I was 69. So the question was, I'm going to keep this the rest of my life, keep going to doing this for the rest of my life? Do I want to go through this again? Finally, I decided I'd rather raise my daughter and enjoy life for a while. Can't blame him there. Can't blame him if he doesn't want to actually uh, keep doing Star Wars. But here's what he should have did. Um, what I think he always should have done. Put Star Wars in a vault and maybe hire some other people who are committed to Star Wars, who love Star Wars, make, maybe not make movies, maybe continue to keep doing what they was doing from 2005 to the time they sold it, just do other stuff like, sorry about that noise, I'm making noise next door, but um, continue to keep doing small stuff, like the video games and the Clone Wars and all that, that was no problem, but let me move on. Go on to say, I couldn't have sold Lucasfilm and gotten somebody to run the productions, but that, ah, I'm sorry, so sorry for people on that. I couldn't have sold Lucasfilm and gotten somebody to run the productions, but that isn't retiring. Uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, I tried to stay out of the way, but I couldn't. I was there every day. He's committed, which I understand. I like that about George Lee. He was committed, even though he really didn't direct Return of the Jedi Empire Strikes Back. Those are other people who did that. But Lucas went on, even though the people were friends of mine, they did great work. It wasn't the same as me doing it. It was like being once removed. I knew that probably I wouldn't work again. That would be frustrating. Or I'd be frustrated. Okay. He went on to detail his work habits and not and how not selling him would stand in the way of his goal of raising his daughter. Okay, here we go. Lucas explained, I'm one of those micromanagers and guys that I can't help it. So he's a micromanager, and I can't blame him for, you kind of, when it comes down, you kind of don't want to, you want the things to be perfect, even though some things in the prequel shows were kind of outlandish. 
like dialogue, but anyways. So I figured I would forget that, enjoy what I had, and I was looking forward to raising my daughter. He then went on to detail he also wanted to build a museum, which I think he's doing in uh, near um, USC right now, if I could be wrong. I think he was doing that. I also wanted, uh, I said that already, right? which I always wanted to do, so I was thinking, if I don't do this now, I'll never get that done. Okay. Once again, I think you put it in a vault and don't do any more movies. Because I know how, like he just said, he wants to be on it when if a movie's going to be made, he wants to be in it. But, here we go. Then Lucas didn't reveal how painful selling Star Wars was. He stated, I spent my life creating Star Wars 40 years and giving it up was very painful, but it was the right thing to do. He felt it was the right thing to do. He then reinforced that the fact he thought he would be more involved in the secret trilogy, but Disney went in a different direction. So what's the difference between still at least having Lucasfilm as your property, Star Wars as your baby and all that, and letting somebody else just come in and doing it, but still keep a watchful eye? Because if he thought selling it to Disney and he would be more involved in the sequel shows than he wasn't, it just seems like he kind of made a mistake by giving it to Disney. Which I always said, but going on. Lucas stated, I thought I was going to have a little bit more to say about the next three. Which he didn't. I already, I already started started them. Basically, he wrote the movies already. Well, he wrote some pre-drafts. But they decided they wanted to do something else. And we saw what they did. Three times. And it wasn't good. Things don't always work the way you want it. Life is like that at the Star Wars group creator concluded so that's basically what he said but lucas comments reinforced that the pablo and dog has recently released star wars fascinating facts but that claims luke skywalker died in episode dang, i hate roman numerals so it'll be eight i think episode eight and that lucas had a visually envisioned kylo ren ray finn and paul dameron are nothing more than his own pipe dream in Hidalgo's book, he writes, years before The Last Jedi developed, the treatment left by George Lucas in 2012 also had episode 8 be the one where Luke Skywalker would die. As for Ray and Finn, Kylo Ren and Paul wrote, The Force Awakens' long journey from the ideal to finish the film was filled with evolution, but one ideal that remained constant from the start was that of a young woman's quest to become a Jedi Knight. So I'm guessing the original outline George Lucas' original island. She was a 14 year old named Tyran or Taryn. And his, sub his subsequent iterations, she would briefly be named Thea, believe me or not, Winkley. There's so much going on with this article. <laughs> when writer and director J.A. Adams came aboard, he simplified the names to placeholders and doggo at it. And then he stated Kylo Ren was the Jedi killer. Thea became Sally. Finn was called Harry. And the character of Poe will be John, named John Doe. And as the film near production, Sally became Kyra, Kira, which stuck as a code name production, and then Echo, and then finally Ray. However, Lucas made it clear that Disney decided they wanted to do something different. So I'm going to read and skip down a little bit. Something about James Cameron. And also, he wanted to explore more of the wheels, but keep going at which was introduced in the Clone Wars. He said the next Star Wars movies, three of them, were going to be micro into a microbiotic world, but they're, they're, they're this world of creatures that operate differently than we do. I will call them the Wills, which, like I said, was introduced in Clone Wars. And then the Wills are the ones who actually control the universe. They feed off the Force. Lucas had, back in the day, I used to say, ultimately, that what it means is we were just cars, vehicles for the Wills. To travel around in. We were vessels for him. And the conduct is the mighty chlorines. The mighty chlorines are the ones that communicate with the wills. The wills, in the greater sense, they are the force. Well, the mighty chlorines didn't really work out well with fans when they was introduced in the pre uh, prequel. And so Lucas also provided more details about his trilogy plans in Star Wars Archive book. Those include what I said earlier, Dark Maul, uh, Dark Talent, Luke Skywalker rebuilding the Jedi Order, 
and from the survivors of the Order 66 and Leia forming the New Republic. Not only that, but Hidalgo's claim was already previously con contradicted by Mark Kramer, who stated back in 2018, I know, t I happen to know that George didn't like Luke being killed until the end of episode 9 after he trained Leia, which is another thread that was played upon in The Last Jedi, of course. Hamill, Hamill also revealed that Lucas had written an overall arc for the trilogy, something Disney did not do. That is true. Disney did not have an arc with that whole thing. They was just copy and paste of whatever they thought was great with a little bit of woke identity politics in it. George had an overall arc. If he didn't have all the details, he sort of had an overall feel for where the sequel trilogy was going. But this is more like a relay race. You run and hand the torch off to the next guy. He picks it up and goes. He concluded, Ryan didn't write what happens in episode 9. He was going to hand it off to originally Colin Trevorrow, director of Jurassic World, and now JJ. It's an ever-evolving, living, breathing thing. Whoever gets on board to play with the life action figure that we all are. And I think that's even a mistake right there, trying to, um, well, mainly now, it's trying to have different directors with um, this. Because it seems like Colin Trevorrow Ryan Johnson, even J.J. Abrams had three different ideas of what Star Wars should have been, what the sequel trilogy should have been. And it really wasn't, it didn't seem like there was a consensus of what everybody wanted. Like, seeing with the uh, original trilogy, because I know Lucas didn't really direct the uh, last two, but at least everybody was on board somewhat with what they wanted. It's a long article. Lucas was the only one to claim that Disney went into a different direction with his original ideals from Disney CEO and current chairman Bob Iger, who revealed that George felt betrayed by Disney because they didn't use his original treatment. He warned his memoir, Bob Iger, the writer of a lifetime lessons from 15 years of a CEO of the Walt Disney Company. George immediately got upset as they began to describe the plot and it dawned on him that we weren't using one of his stories he submitted during the negation. Ah, during the talks. I can't talk. Bob were Iger continued, George knew we weren't contractually bound to anything, but he thought that buying the story and treatments was a tic-tac or a tactic promised that we follow them. And he was disappointed that his story wasn't being discarded. That was being discarded, I mean. This is a long article. He then stated, I've been so careful since our first conversation not to mislead him in any way. And I didn't think I had now, but I could have handled it better. George felt betrayed, which we also heard, I think, last year that came out. And while this whole process would never have been easy for him, we've gotten off to an unnecessary rocky start, Iger concluded. Even J.J. Abrams contradicts Hidalgo's claim, so I don't know who's telling the truth here. Abrams detailed in 2015, I came on board and Disney had already decided they didn't want to go in that direction, so they mandated what was started from scratch and tell a story that was Continue and Kathy Kelly brought on uh, Larry Casson and Michael Arnett, and I think that's how you pronounce it. And it was those people I began working with. So, um, that's a lot to digest right there. It's a lot that went on. Uh, let me start with the whole what George Lucas, what he reason why he sold it. I'm just gonna focus on that because the other stuff is just. We heard that stuff so many times, and you don't really know who's really to um, believe here. But I'm going to go over George Lucas on what? Two parts. So the first part. Um, if he felt like he had to sell it or he felt like he wanted to spend time with his family and daughter, I don't blame him for that. I'm never going to get on him for that, but... Um, I think his whole thing, and I think this has been talked about before, I think his whole thing was he thought Disney, which actually Bob Iger actually said in his memoirs, he probably thought Disney was going to do right by taking the reins from uh, taking Lucasfilm from and buying it from And he probably thought, like he said in the article, that they was actually going to do what he probably had envisioned they was going to do, but apparently Disney didn't do that. And 
it's probably more than, like I said, I always think this is more to blame on Kathleen Kennedy because she is the president of Lucasfilm. This slowly, I put the blame not so much on Lucas because I can't really fault him for that anymore because we didn't really know the real reason. Some people like to say that the real reason, real reason why he sold Lucasfilm because of the fans were on him about what happened in the prequels. But if that's his, the reason why he sold it, then fine. That's not his problem. My problem is always going to lie on basically what Lucasfilm and Disney did because they didn't really have to do what they did. They didn't really have to make the most boring, most plot hole contradicting, we're going to erase everything that Lucas did before that, just destroy everything. They didn't have to do that at all. And I know they feel like they own the company and everything, but I think if you wanted to make a successful trilogy, a successful Star Wars trilogy, they should have just took what George had, the person who actually made the freaking thing, the whole saga, the whole entire franchise, they should have listened to him more and then put some of his ideas and never listened to whatever Captain Kennedy did, Kennedy has said. That was their first, that was their whole total mistake. So, I don't know. It is what it is now with Star Wars. They did what they did, and now they are on the uh, back track to trying to repair whatever they can repair with the Mandalorian. I, for one, have not watched an episode of the Mandalorian. I don't really care to watch an episode of the Mandalorian. I think they, what they should have done is not also, also listen to what any of these simple jacks on Twitter have said. Which I think they're starting to do now. With the whole, we want Gina Carano out of the Mandalorian. I'm glad they didn't. Well, I hope they didn't listen to that. Because that would be stupid. Because the fans don't dictate what goes on with your business. I'm glad they didn't do that. Some did good Disney did. But I think, as we all know, so many people have said that their problem was going woke to... When it went bad, blaming the fans for when it went bad, because nobody liked what they saw in the sequel trilogy, and then doing all this other, other letting Ryan Johnson run his mouth the whole entire time for the last two years, and all these other people run their mouths. Um, that's when they decided. That's when everything went downhill, and that's why I don't really watch anything from Lucasfilm. Don't really want to watch anything. Don't even want to do anything. When it comes to Disney, I don't even want to go to Disney parks. I don't want to do nothing that, with that. I barely want to buy any of the uh, MCU stuff because Marvel, had, but Disney has done so much crap in the last few years that it's like I'm not going to give money for people who destroy things that brought joy to people's lives. I'm not going to do that. And why would I pay them to continue to keep doing this type of stuff? Keep continuing to disregard Luke Skywalker and make him a joke. And all kinds of stuff like that. I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to pay for that. Why would I pay to watch The Mandalorian? Why would I pay to watch The Mandalorian? Why would I pay Disney to, to watch The Mandalorian? When they could have, should have just put, did it, put it out on TV for free. They could have did that. Why I got to pay an extra $6 to watch that? That's just me. So, I know that's a lot that I just said in, in 19 minutes. But what do you guys think about this whole thing? George Lucas finally revealing the reason why he sold it. For me, I really can't blame him, but it's unfortunate the way things turned out with Star Wars and it's kind of become a laughing stock and holding on by a tiny thread with everything. So what do you guys think? But uh, say something down in the comments below. And um, I don't think I'm done. I'm getting tired and thirsty. With that being said, uh, peace. Y'all be safe out there and uh, happy holidays. Bye.